Greetings, Earthlings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the Capricorn new moon happening on January 13th, early AF in the manana for you Capricorn, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon people. If you are a Capricorn, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon, this video is for none other than you. Uh, by the end of it, Caps, you're going to understand what you can expect astrologically in the weather, so to speak, for the next month, um, really mid-January to mid-February, because it takes four full weeks for any moon cycle to be done being. So we're in this moon cycle from mid-January to mid-February Capricorn. Before I jump into all the juicy details, and they are juicy as this is in none other than your first house Capricorn, which is the most significant house in many ways in one's chart, right? Because that rules your body, your flat out experience in the world at a very baseline foundational level. So Capricorn, um, there's a lot to talk about and it's gonna be very personally, personally transformative for you seeing as it is in such a meaningful house. And as you can see in the chart here, there's a lot of aspects uh, being made to this lunation. And there's a lot of really interesting planetary placements and relationships, conversations that are happening. As I was saying though, before we do jump into this and more of that Capricorn, couple quick announcements. Number one, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, I don't know what you're doing. I put out a video every single day of the week. If you resonate with this content, you are welcome to join us. That is uh, my open invitation to, to you if you're looking to learn more about astrology, if you vibe because we're building tribe and it costs nothing right now. Um, eventually I'll be growing this platform to provide more of this kind of content on a membership based level. But for now, I am making it entirely free on the internet. So you might as well join us, okay, Capricorn, if you vibe. Number two, like this video cap if it brings you any value whatsoever because that helps other Capricorn people get this information for nothing in exchange. Um, by hitting the like button, it's a good way to show gratitude. The universe honors you and you honor gratitude to those who provide you value. So, you know, I give you that invitation to support this content as well. And even if there are any trolls out there posing as real boss Capricorns who do hit the down arrow, um, that still actually helps the channel grow. So jokes on them. Now, with that said, um, the last thing is if you're looking for a reading Capricorn, I am available again for bookings on those a uh, couple weeks out, but uh, at most, but uh, yeah, anyway, that's an option. You can check out my email address in the uh, description box down below if you are looking to get those kinds of services from an astrologer. Okie doke. So looking at this chart, Capricorn, what you can expect is a lot of deep transformation. And you've been going through this for three years already, if not longer, because Pluto has been in your first house for way more time than that. But what has been in your sign for the last three years, Capricorn, is Saturn, as you probably already know, which is your ruling planet, as again, you might already know. But now Saturn is thankfully in your second house. And this is going to bring a whole different vibe to finances and what you possess and what you uh, have that you've worked for, okay, over any period of time. In the second house is what you own. It's what you possess. And, you know, finances go in that bucket as well. So Saturn is going to help you build all this up. And it's already started building up what you own and possess. But this particular new moon for this month of influence is almost like a cherry on top of the transformation Sunday that you've been undergoing as a Capricorn ascendant sun or moon for the last three years. Because now, again, Saturn is done with you. Thank goddess. That was so hard. Uh, and you know, it's, it's almost like it's going to give you its parting gift as it is finally in Aquarius firmly. So it will not retrograde back into, excuse me, Capricorn. It's going to be in Aquarius for the next three years, you know? So, uh, why do I say this is the cherry on the transformation Sunday? Cause look what planet is conjunct the new moon. This is Pluto. Pluto is the God of the underworld. It's Hades. It's the puppeteer that pulls the strings. It's the uh, behind the scenes master player kind of person. It's also 
uh, manipulator energy, but in a highest vibration, it's like Phoenix energy. So you are the Phoenix with this new moon um, because the new beginning on offer is of Plutonian variety. You can see it's at 24 degrees and the new moon itself is at 23 degrees. So we have a one degree orb here, y'all, uh, between Pluto and the new moon. New moon is new beginning. It's when the divine mother and the divine father, the moon and the sun respectively, yoke together, come together to create something new. It's like a baby zygote, like a unicellular being of human identity, like a fertilized egg or whatever. But like Pluto's here at the party and Pluto is like the dark underlord who is also like the phoenix and the highest vibration. So there's like a new beginning through like death, in other words. And so what death have you experienced lately? Was it the death of someone close to you? Was it the death of a part of you that you no longer have anymore? Um, what is the Pluto in your life? Pluto is a symbol, just like any one of these planets. The original astrologers, you know, thought of the planets like omens from the gods and goddesses. So it's kind of like, um, what does Pluto stand in for in your life, Capricorn? That's the question to consider, to contemplate. And once you know that, which you are the one who will know that, what that Pluto means for you as a Capricorn individually, um, that's going to help inform this interpretation. So basically, if you're a Capricorn and you know what that Pluto means, the new beginning that's on hold between mid-January and mid-February, that is on offer. What it is you know is on offer to you. So if you know that like it means you're coming back from some type of death experience of a loved one or you know, your own identity in a certain regard or whatever that psychological shift is that Pluto is hearkening here, um, that's going to be where you've experienced that change, that deep change. And the flavor of that deep change, if you choose to go high vibe Phoenix with it, is further exposed and revealed through where the planetary dispositor of Capricorn, aka Saturn, is at the time of this lunar event. So the new moon is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is in Aquarius at the time of this event, which is the second house to Capricorn, AKA your first house. So your finances, again, your abundance, what you possess, your owner, kind of like what you own, your value, um, your land even can be the second house and your very, very close family can be the second house as well as the food you eat. All those different factors are like basically um, on offer for transformation and also flavor the uh, transformation experience that you're likely to undergo at this time. It's almost like they're fused together. And so the new beginning is very much so independent to you and your life experience, your embodiment is the first house you feel, but the second house is where you're going to experience a flavor of newness really kind of crystallizing into. And I like about this new moon Capricorn that Saturn is, yeah, out of your sign because that just makes it a little easier for you. But I also like that it's in a better sign. Um, in Vedic astrology, Saturn and Aquarius is the best place for Saturn to be. It's not even in Capricorn, even though Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius in the ancient world astrology, you feel it's better in Aquarius because it's a day planet on the team day, right? In terms of sect Saturn is, and Saturn likes being there for more masculine signs. And so of the two signs that Saturn rules, Capricorn and Aquarius, it likes and performs better, generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, when it's in Aquarius. So like the dispositor, the new moon is like a thumbs up for like the outcome of the situation. Also that Saturn is still conjunct by a three degree orb y'all, which is the tightest, most conservative degree that the ancients used with Jupiter, the great benefic. Again, a great omen, a great indicator that true gifts, true spiritual abundance, or who knows, physical abundance, because we do have the spiritual abundant God of Jupiter in the house of material abundance, second house. You know, this shows us, y'all, that Capricorn's got on offer good vibes. Now, I'm going to be straight with you as usual. Per usual, look at this shit going on, though. You see all those square lines? That's some square energy for sure. That's happening between Mars and Saturn. Those are the OG malefics, people. Those are like the original so-called bad guys of the uh, planetary spectrum. So 
you know, that is all to say that Saturn is in a great place, groovy, whatever, that it's in Aquarius, that it's conjunct Jupiter, da da da. But at the end of the day, Saturn is still square Mars, as you can see here on the screen. And that's not a great thing per se. Now, let me tell you what Saturn square Mars generally means. A lot of bull crap effort, hard ass work, really going against the grain, climbing up the mountain day in, day out, and the struggle and the necessity to fight is so effing real, yo, like so real that it's just not even cozy. It's not. And Mars square Saturn is never cozy. It's like an Olympic athlete training. It's like constant and it's a grind and it's exhausting, okay? But let me tell you the other side of this. If you are pursuing something that you've been already thinking about for a long time, Capricorn, that you've been building for a long time, that you already have vetted in your own consciousness waves and like energy waves for a long time, you can make some moves on this and experience lasting hardcore change and result um, from it. But be prepared, Capricorn. If you do do this, you are investing money probably because there's a second house influence here, okay? And the eighth house ruler, the sun in your chart is in the first house. So there's probably some investment going on on your end. And also it's going to be in pursuit of your passion projects because there's a fifth house signature to that Mars and Taurus here. Now, with that said, that sounds really great, right? You're investing in your passion projects, second house, fifth house. Okay, fine. That sounds great. But look at the square aspect, y'all. That's a square. That means there's going to be struggle. There's going to be challenge. You're going to have to put in persistence. You're going to have to put in resilience. There's going to be a high energy input to get this long-term lasting output. So if it's not something that you're willing to do like that, I know you're a Capricorn. I know who I'm talking to here. You are people, generally speaking, every chart is unique. But you know that good things take time and good things take effort. Things that are worth having, at least, put in. you have to put in time and effort. But like with that said, if you're not trying to turn your bliss passion project into a long-term hustle, a long-term grind, and willing to go up the mountain for that passion project, which I know you're a Capricorn, you're the fucking goat, whatever. At the same time though, if you're not trying to experience that vibration with this project, maybe it's not time for that project, Capricorn. And that's just my honest, real kind of like, you know, this is what it is. Now with that said, Cap, the signatures are in this chart that you are willing and able, if you're into this, you are able at this point in time to level up in a profound way to deeply psychologically transform because Pluto is there with that new beginning. There's no denying that by one degree orb, you know, 24 degrees to 23 degrees, as you can see here. But like, be prepared for what that Mars square Saturn means, what that really means if you're going to take this. You're a Capricorn, you tend to be calculated about shit anyway, but don't forget what it is because this is what it is. Now, last little kind of gem in here that I'll touch on is that Venus is in your sign at the time of this lunation event, which is blessed. And Venus is uh, trining Mars and Uranus conjunct in that fifth house. Anything could happen with that Mars Uranus in the fifth house, but Venus is here to smooth things out. Venus is peaceful. Uh, Venus in your sign actually functions halfway decently, um, but more so of the classics. So you know, this is an interesting combination because Uranus and Taurus is here to like break through and innovate and surprise in terms of like earth technology. Um, and I mean that in the most organic of senses, just as much as the most artificial of senses, if you follow what I'm trying to say there. But like Venus and Capricorn is like a love of the classics, an appreciation and a respect for the tradition of everything. Kind of like an old school classic, excuse me, <laughs> an old school uh, classic kind of like um vibe you know classic like recognition of the way things have been you know not immediately what's in front of you new 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 all the time but like the old school so you might find that as a capricorn in some way shape or form whether you're a capricorn ascendant sun or moon you're at this time for the next month you really experience great pleasure by somehow reminiscing through memory lane because venus and capricorn is nostalgic energy it is a love of the classics it's a saturn ruled sign y'all and venus there is the pleasure formula the pleasure formula in the sign of saturn the classics it's basically abcs of elementary school you feel so 
anyway with that said you're like experiencing or up on offer Capricorn to kind of experience a bliss in terms of your roots and where where it is that you feel most aligned with in terms of like what the older version of yourself is and embodies <coughs> cool I just choked myself so I think I'm gonna end the video but with that said Hope this brought you value. And if it did, hit the like button because it helps other Capricorns get the 411. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you want a reading, the link for that or the email for that is down below. And with that said, do next time. And until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.